The gospel is that Jesus was the promised offspring in Genesis 3 that God said would crush Satan. Throughout the Old Testament, there was a question mark. Who will the offspring be? Who will be the one to crush Satan? Who will be the one to gather God's people effectively and permanently, setting up a kingdom that would not be shaken? Who would be the one to fulfill God's promises to David to be a king with an everlasting reign? Who would be the one to fulfill the promises to Abraham to bless the many nations? Who would ultimately fulfill fulfill God's love for humanity when God decided not to wipe out all of humanity but preserve it through Noah? Who would be the one to forgive God's people? How would the Old Testament sacrificial system be fulfilled? Where would it find its fulfillment? Where would the temple find its fulfillment? Jesus is the answer to all that. He is the creator who became a baby. Born in humble circumstances, out of love for humanity, with an electing and effective love for his people, for the elect. Humble, powerful, authoritative, spoke unlike any other man. I love the Gospel of John. Some soldiers were sent to, temple police were sent to arrest Jesus. And Jesus just talked a certain way. And and they came back and, and they were asked, why didn't you arrest him? He doesn't talk like anybody else talks. He tells the storm to shut up. And it sends shivers down the spines of his disciples. And they feared. Who is this that commands the wind and the waves? He uh, is the, the Herodians, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law. They attempt to humiliate Jesus on Holy Week. His... his um, his clout was powerful at one point. People were afraid of his power. And so they, they attempted to cancel him. They attempted to humiliate him. And he had a power that I don't have in myself. He had a power to speak words of wisdom that shut his enemies down. And knowing he would be put to death, set his face toward Jerusalem, marched there like a boss, saying, no one takes my life from me. I give it up of my own accord. He went to Jerusalem, praised by children. Hosanna, Hosanna. He stirred up the hornet's nest on purpose and was arrested as though a criminal put through Uh, unjust trials, and ironically judged, ironically judged, Barabbas, criminal, released. Jesus, spotless Lamb of God, creator in the flesh, put to death as though an embarrassed, as though an embarrassing, humiliating, shameful criminal on a cross, pierced for our transgressions, absorbing the wrath of God. Um, letting the the attributes of justice and mercy kiss in the same moment. God satisfying his justice in punishing sin and then providing mercy, uh, both as an offer and as an effective accomplishment. Jesus is buried in a tomb, which is guarded and sealed. He busts out like a boss. Who raised Jesus from the dead? God the Father did. Oh, and the Holy Spirit did. Oh, and Jesus also raised himself as a Trinitarian work of God, triumphant over the dead, over the death. The check is cleared. The payment for sin, 
accomplished. Satan defeated. Jesus ascends on high, sits at the right hand of the Father, like a boss. And now he is in charge. He's king. He's king. He's boss. He's, he's, he's the, for Christians, he is our highest political authority. You don't want, let's say you don't want to, you do not want Donald Trump to be your highest political theor- authority during this era, then you need a higher political authority than Trump. You don't like Obama, you don't like Biden. I, they're not my highest authorities. Jesus is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He reigns on high. He, he, uh, he has an ultimate sovereign will that can't be thwarted. He is subjecting all things under his feet. The Father will grant it all to him, and he will come back someday to judge the living and the dead. And we will either receive and welcome his return with joy, having been forgiven and reconciled and adopted and forgiven as a free gift by empty-handed, weak faith that is genuine and repentant, receiving the immediate gift of being counted righteous in Christ, perfectly forgiven, permanently adopted, permanently, or we will, at his return, wish we could die because it'll be so terrible and frightening to behold the power and the wrath of the Lamb of God who will come back to crush his enemies and send them to hell forever. So, as a Christian, I have been forgiven. And as an ambassador, I want the whole world to know that Jesus is king. He is king over all cultural zeitgeists and woke sensibilities. He is king over all uh, religious hypocrisies, all corruption, all sexual immorality. He will render judgment. And he has a way of showing his glory through weak people. He has a, a way of calling to himself people that are not wise, they're not smart. They're, they're the ones who spread Facebook conspiracy theories. They're the ones who say cringeworthy things. They're, not, they're, t- they're disproportionately poor. They're disproportionately flyover country. They disproportionately have politics that the cultural elites don't like. They're disproportionately not what the world calls powerful or smart or honorable. And he saves and gathers a people for himself to show off his power and his glory and his mercy, his grace. And he has that people form into local churches with their own governances and their own um, unity and a faithful preaching of the word. And he blesses his people through that. And we're preparing... It's as, though the, the, it's as though we're a kind of little preview of the installed future government of the, of the world. The meek shall inherit the earth. Utah is mine. I am among God's people. The earth is mine. It's all mine. It'll be renewed and it'll be mine. And it, the, the, the local church is a kind of preview government, a little installment, an outpost of the kingdom of Jesus. He wins. So... If you're going to follow a false religion that teaches that Jesus is not who I described him as, if you're going to worship a God who's not the first God, not the most high, he's a learner, he's a receiver of power from ancestor gods. If you're going to adopt a a spirit of the age which contradicts the ethos and the commands and the words of Jesus, Um, if you're going to rebel and be resistant, if you're going to hate that you're created and hate the design of the creator, you're going to push back against all that and you're going to reject the free offer of the forgiveness of sins through the ambassadors of Jesus, you're going to go to hell and you're going to be rightly punished for all your sins. But if you submit and you take a knee and you trust not in yourself, not in religion, not in falsehood, but if you trust in the true Jesus, and you, you declare spiritual bankruptcy 
and you trust him for the forgiveness of your sins because of the finished work of Jesus on the cross, you will be saved. So let's summarize it. Let's just say that was a lot of words, Aaron. You fleshed it out too much. I can't take it all right now. Well, here's the simplicity of it. In Romans 10, Paul says, all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. 